they destroyed their own game. Domina is a very popular title, a very artistic Roman gladiator simulator, training up your troops and getting the right guys to fight for you for glory. And it was all going so well. They'd done so much when it comes to promoting this game and actually making a decent title. Reviews were fantastic. Surely they couldn't do something to mess it up now. Well, despite the very popular nature of the game, as you can tell by recent reviews, something's gone wrong. Recently, Domina has been review bombed to hell. Is it because they've added in a recent update that changes everything and makes the game incredibly unpopular? Is it because of the recent microtransactions? There could definitely be a factor there. But there's something else. Something that is mind blowing. <laughs> and this is how Dolphin Barn Incorporated has managed to kill their own game. They were doing so well. But first, what do people play games for? Well, mostly for fun. It might even be for their job as well. But the main crux around video gaming is to get an experience that you don't get in real life. Whether you're a first person shooter, taking a role in the army, or a strategist on a grand campaign, even a racing car driver, or to some extent, fighting in the gladiators arena and sending troops to their death. People play video games to get away from the harsh realities that we have around us. And whilst it is such a cliche to say the world is a disaster and it's all going wrong, video games are a great place for telling new stories, for experiencing new things. But every now and then that bubble is popped and you realize that the people not only playing these games, but sometimes behind these games are real humans and they can also say dumb shit. On Domina's most recent patch notes that was released on March the 9th, 2022, it goes into some small updates for the 1.318 beta. On these patch notes, it talks about fixing the administrator, might not buy water and wine even when it's available in the market. Ooh, fancy. There's a new voxel model drawing resolution times two. Ooh, they've optimized some of the gladiator render and draw routines. That's fun. Even the particle and dust effects are optimized. Ooh, that's really great. And what's more, you should take off your fucking masks next time you- Wait, what's- Wait, this isn't a patch. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I thought this was a patch note for a game. Yes, a developer has managed to kill their game off with one dumb line in a patch note. For some reason, whether you agree with the sentiment or not, Dolphin Barn thought it would be a great idea to put their opinion, quite a controversial opinion, I might say, in the patch notes for a, a, a dumb indie game. Take off the f***ing masks. Next time you're at the grocery store, try showing a woman your face. Be confident, unafraid of the lies. You might get a guilt for it. Women like confidence. Women don't like dudes who cover up their faces in fear. What are you afraid of? Getting laid? Grow up. Yes, these are the wise, wise words of a man that has made a pixel-based game around the Roman gladiator system. Don't get me wrong, it's a fascinating concept. The game itself is great, but these sound like the words of a man that has never felt the touch of a woman's body. And trust me, that's coming from someone that makes Mountain Blade videos for a living. Of course, people are unhappy with this, but it's putting it in a game that has nothing to do with any of that. It kind of is a complete break of the fourth wall, but it's also one of the most self-destructive things you can do. As seen, overwhelmingly negative responses have been bombed onto the Steam site. I think this review sums it up perfectly. How to ruin a game in two easy steps. One, add microtransactions years into release. Two, add a weird rant about masks in your patch notes. Avoid this death. And that's the main thing. It is just weird. Using patch notes as a glorified Twitter feed. And there's always been that discussion. Can you separate the artist from the artwork? Even when it comes to some great extents, like a figure like Michael Jackson, who made incredible music, but is one of the most controversial figures, especially in the modern day. Now, many people say, yes, you should be able to separate the artist from the artwork. But when the artist themselves injects themselves into that art, i.e. the patch notes of the game that they're making, it's almost impossible to do so, which is why this has been so critically review bombed on Steam. And whether they deserve it or not, they have self-imploded their own income. They have self-imploded their own future of a developer on the platform. And that's not saying I'm for or against anything they've said. It's irrelevant. It shouldn't be in the patch notes for a game. That's not where it belongs. I'm sorry, but nobody who's playing this game, who's going through the patch notes and waiting for new updates, is going to be swayed or their mind changed about your opinions on masks as they're launching up the title. Man, what do I feel like playing today? Age of Empires? Mm, bit of rim world. Not really. We could go back and play some bandit. You know what? Domin Dominion. 
this is quite a good game. Yeah, let's go. Oh, wait, there's a new patch. Wow. That's amazing. Oh, my God, they fixed some. Take off my mask. Mum. Mum, we've been doing it wrong. This guy's telling me I'm... Hey. No, no, no. No, I do. I, I, I was trying to play the game. Oh. Prob probably not take advice from a guy that plays games on a pandemic. It's a very weird scenario that I didn't really think that we'd end up in. But it leads you onto the question that games have always been a channel for telling new stories, and a lot of those stories can be political. I mean, let's look at Battlefield 1, for example. The full opening mission and cinematic for that was telling people about the horrors of war and how people are people. A German soldier and a French soldier looking at each other on the battlefield thinking, why are we doing this? Questioning what they've been sent to actually accomplish during the Great War. There's always been political opinions and things being put into games through storytelling. That's not a bad thing. Asking questions and maybe answering some for others. But it's the way that it's been put into patch notes as an obvious direct opinion from a person behind the development team. Rather than an interesting story that questions things with intrigue and actually tries to make up sense of its own, it comes across as a weird, uneducated rant that sucks people out of the experience that they thought they would have trying to get away from that kind of thing. The devs have actually come out on Twitter to follow this up. I, I like the emojis, by the way, very, very classy. Many a true nerd also quoting, saying, the best bit when devs double down on edgelord rants is you know they're thinking, all publicity is good publicity. Dominion's had 48 players on Steam right now, 5% down on last week, 10% down on last month. Proving that uh, the game's already pretty dead anyway, so actually, this might have been the way of trying to get the name back in the books. I don't think it helped though. I people still aren't playing it. Yeah, uh, it, the game's the game's dead. Yeah, as we can see by the Steam charts, the game's pretty much dead anyway. It had its peak in June of 2017, and it's it's been a, a downhill from there. Even when this tweet came out, it, it made no difference. So good job, Dolphin Barn. You had a great game, and I'm sure people will carry on to enjoy your game into the future. But you, as a developer, you're an idiot. I don't care what your opinion is, but you're an idiot. And on that note, so am I.